good morning, people. Uh, unless you're in a part of the world that is evening, to which good evening, good afternoon, and and anything in between. Today, uh, I find myself wanting to give you guys something unique again. This vlog cannot always be about the things that I do or the things that Kathy and I do. It has to be about interesting people. And today, I've decided to bring you somebody especially interesting. Somebody who is quite extraordinary at what they do. Waiting on the sirens. You're about to meet somebody and hear their story. Uh, someone who uh, is a very good friend of mine, someone who's quite extraordinary at what they do, has been in the car world for quite some time. And if you look closely at what he drives, you'll see that he's very, very meticulous. In fact, I went into his house, went into the bathroom, and the bathroom was the nicest bathroom that I've ever seen. That being said, uh, I want to introduce you guys to, as I said, a very good friend of mine, ladies and gentlemen, pinstriper Johnny Martinez. My name is John Martinez. Uh, I'm a hot rod guy. I uh, pinstripe, um, show my hot rod, and uh, pretty committed into the car scene. Pinstriping is uh, is a form of art, uh, and there's so many forms of the artwork in pinstriping and the applications that guys want on their cars, on their motorcycles, and items such as helmets and skateboards and like that. Uh, and that's how uh, that's how pinstriping is applied in the SoCal culture and with the custom car guys. in uh, the San Fernando Valley. I grew up in Reseda and I grew up in the, in the 50s. I was born in 52 so the first 10 years of my life uh, was uh, playing in the neighborhood with uh, with my friends and uh, and soon after I had a good friend there in the neighborhood who used to build uh, model cars and so he taught me how to build model cars and I guess that was probably the beginning of, of my interest in cars and, uh, and I followed the car scene as a kid and grew up with that and soon uh, as I got a little bit older I had my my hot rod heroes and uh, there's one in particular who's a good friend of mine today today uh, we're friends uh, and uh, and I knew that I want to get into the car culture I just didn't know that I was really going to get in it and get in it as deep as I did and uh, it was the best thing I ever did One of the challenges uh, growing up for me was that I was the youngest kid in the neighborhood and when I was able to have a serious interest in cars, which is where I started to head, all my friends were older, they had cars. And so that drove me even more uh, and that was probably my biggest challenge as a kid. I was, I was almost up for anything. As I got older, uh, raising my family and all, the challenge was like some people money. 
it was money. And then uh, my most serious challenge was uh, the illness that my wife and I suffered. We both suffered cancer. Uh, we both survived it. And uh, everything just went in, a, in an upward motion, a positive mindset. And, and that drew me and carried me to what I do today. My wife was diagnosed with cancer in 2001. And it was about a year and a half, two years of dealing with that. And uh, four years later, 2005, I was diagnosed and everything stopped again. And uh, the challenge was on once again. I, I finished high school and then my dad said, you're gonna go to work. That's what you're gonna do. If you don't wanna go to school, you're gonna go to work. Uh, and, and that's what I did. My, my, um, my childhood was, was the best. I, I, I had no challenges. I had no you know, real serious challenges. Uh, I had a great uh, kid life. I had great friends. I was the youngest one, so I had a lot of heroes, so to speak. When my life really changed and, and uh, a life-changing situation was in my adult years when, uh, when we were stricken with cancer. Uh, my wife and I, but I gotta say it was it was a positive thing all the way, you know. Nothing, nothing ever happened bad. It was um, it, it was good. The most that I'm grateful for is the second chance that my wife and I got. Uh, you know, up until then, I I guess I took things for granted. You, you, you're bulletproof. I I was in construction for most of my life, and my my work was hard. Um, I got up early. I worked till I till it was late. I worked seven days a week sometimes, uh, and I played hard. Uh, it wasn't until my illness and my wife's illness that set us back uh, in mindset, and we realized that anything we thought we were, we weren't. You know, health is everything, and that's when uh, that's when I grounded, and that is when everything started to go good for me. Uh, uh, the good things that, that have come from life for me and for my family. The mindset that I now have was one I didn't have before and I think that's the biggest thing that changed the way I look at everything and everything that I do and how I look at people. flashlight in my mouth and uh, I finished it with the flashlight in my mouth. In, uh, in my life, um, I had the tragedy, the illnesses like that. Uh, I try to look for the good in each day now, and uh, there is good in each day. And when there's things that aren't so good, uh, I've learned to step around it and, and move on. Uh, every morning on social media, I post a sunrise. And I started doing that after I went through my cancer bout. And the purpose in that, and I've had a lot of people ask me, the purpose in that is the, the sunrise that we have up in the skies sometimes are magnificent. You look up at them, they're free. 
And to me, I perceive that as the, the canvas of the day that you make. That's the painting that you're going to paint in the day. So the sunrise is the canvas, you make your day, and at the end of the day, that was the painting that you painted. And that's the reason for those, and that's how I see it. And uh, there's, there's a lot of good out there, you just got to find it. Striping uh, started with me. Uh, it was part of the car, uh, the the car culture. Uh, the striper I used to use, uh, Rick Grendo, who no longer is with us, was my inspiration. And when I uh, when I wanted to learn how to pinstripe, it was in 2013. I had just won Grand Nationals. I had done everything I wanted to do with the hot rod. So I picked up the brush and I self taught myself how to brush. And uh, I, I picked it up at age 60, I might add which I think is insane. I did it just as a hobby. I just wanted to learn how to do it. And it took me so much further than I thought it would do. Uh, and that's how I got inspired. If I'm not doing pinstriping for someone, a commissioned uh, piece, uh, I'm pinstriping things just to pinstripe. Uh, old pinstripers used to tell me, you need to stripe every day to keep, keep in, in, in touch with it. Uh, I've come to learn that. I don't know how and I don't know why, but the pinstriping came fairly easy for me. So I'm out here every day striping uh, for somebody or for myself, and that's what I do. I, I love doing that. My rock and roll's playing, and I'm lost in it.